哦呀,當我就能夠打到你別生,就當這個點的,當這個浪漫沒把樣打到,就別生這個,我就去你家,就把這個,這個都當別去,什麼生意別過,分居別過,那別生的,別生的,別生的,別生的,別生的,別生的
simbi nengeli, simbi nebatili kum tepdir wa. O da di meba sogen de la, hani simdini gibi çola kazuk güne ya, kuyu tugengi. O da dindir ki dini kasına, o sim şincans, da lüşin duca wa da sim şin duca wa. O da dindir wa di, o da dindir ki batamca sebi lejen o, sütü da ki batamca lüşin can da sim şin can di, hani kasına go di tobayına, da diba seyge dini gengi go di dini zuhun wa. Da kasına diba seyge wa la ni bu, Ani ni bu lamjela diyor ki di lamdiki şima rodi da lüşin duçanga da simşin duçangı an devi simba di niye bardu kuguysa da diba tamci seva çevas da lüge neyinin niye bardan simge neyinin niye bard tamci seva çibi ani dinle çile de deba ani lüşin devi çula çıda dödü de kudurunga o dinle çula ani lüşin duçanga da simşin duçanga simdi kabdi ani şincang di dinle çula sunga re so di sunutus. And we'll begin reading in the section which doesn't have a separate heading, but it's just continued from page uh, 82 after the, you know, the first indented paragraph where it says question. Uh, is, uh, is everyone hearing me fine? I just want to double check because I'm in a different position with the... Yes. Good. Thank you, Venerable. Okay. Question. Well, then, what are the means of achieving pliancy? And upon achieving it, how does it lead to serenity? Reply. Pliancy is to be understood in accordance with the explanation in Asanga's compendium of knowledge. What is pliancy? It is a serviceability of the body and mind due to the cessation of the continuum of physical and mental dysfunctions, and it has the function of dispelling all obstructions. So, Let's see, let me read one more line. Yeah, okay. So, uh, so starting here, then we are looking at this. Uh, you know what happens after you've gone through those nine methods or mental states, nine methods of uh, placing the mind or, or abiding of the mind, also called the nine mental states, and then you get to the ninth one. That ninth one again is this. Um, you know. Engaging in engaging in equanimity, um, it can be called also the um, the effort, sort of the effortless, spontaneous engagement you know, has various names for it, like those. Uh, but that itself, that ninth stage, is not itself enough, or doesn't mean that you've attained actual serenity. That is not the attainment of serenity, because the attainment of serenity also needs to have this. Be, it has to be accompanied by and assisted by the uh, pliancy of body and mind, the physical and mental pliancy. And the, and the um, physical and mental pliancy are what overcome the physical and mental dysfunction. So the physical and mental dysfunction, uh, a little bit just below here, it, it kind of defines them more clearly, uh, where it says, you know, uh, physical and mental, right, the very next line, physical and mental dysfunctions are the unfitness of your body and mind for being employed to cultivate virtue at will. And then it gives more specific definitions individually of them. Uh, so these are really, when it comes down to it, when you go to meditate, then for instance, let's looking, looking at the physical dysfunction first. Uh, so it's something that is, um, you know, it's a it's a fault or a, a you know a problem that arises for you in your practice, depending that's dependent on the body. So you basically, for instance, you can't you know remain seated in meditation for a long period of time, and so that prevents you from being able to attain serenity uh, and being able to to remain in meditation. Likewise, something that's uh, some kind of problem that arises the independence on the mind is uh, going to be included in this mental uh, dysfunction. So we have the uh, pliancy comes and counteracts that. So for instance, the physical pliancy allows you with your body to engage in uh, virtue and to you know, put yourself in the direction of virtuous phenomena, virtuous, virtuous activities and phenomena for as long as you wish and be able to, you know, act in that in that virtuous way for as long as you wish you, you were able to do that uh, so then likewise with the, with the mental pliancy for or the mind engaging in virtue and this has this says here in this quotation it has the function of dispelling all obstructions so this is you know 
how, the obstructions we need to dispel, and that's what the paths, the function of the paths is to dispel the obstruction. So here the pliancy is really the basis of the path or the, or the paths, as you could say the paths. Uh, so it's this basis because, you know, we really, again, there's this bliss that comes from the physical and mental pliancy that sort of sustains or assists all the paths. And that uh, allows us to overcome and dispel all obstructions. Yes. Hoduje, Tadi Odra, Ludan Simgi Ning in any is Ludan Simgi, which a lot of Dubala, Chidder, Dubatar, called the Murua, Yilas, Tinibur Luda Sim Shinto Jawanese, and Lusim Lusim Ning in any need of Travis, Ludan Simgi, which a lot of Kovala Shinto, less room I was, Tadi, Kasanaji, or the Shinjan Nigitin, Wodi, what a cherry the whole to what a Wodi. That in the Kariki, Lu Xinjiang, the Sim Xinjiang, say, take Lu Ging in Sejela, Lu Xinjiang, Sim Ging in Sejela, Sim Xinjiang. That Lu is Ning in the Sim Ning in the Gom Javica Suda, Gion Paji Chigin Ruata, Chingu de Paka, Sana, Tarun Lu Gidine, Rua, nearly the Sim Ning in Tanga Pad, Semazudan, but she near Toby Marapena, Sim Guba de Negatula, Chimata Gubi, Gun de Paji Chedita. Never chowered. In a young the Garisna, who she nigging will a perma to a duby sim corona never de Gasna, that Lula de be never did not similar to be never de Sema to Anza, and he called Tingins in Gum de Ine and Cushinis against Simua, or Tim or Tin Perma with Matua de Never de Luda Simi Ningelins. Resua, that Lugin Ningelins, Sedita, Tin Gum Java Tisna, Taki Kondu Shiva Nashin, and Ludini Gasna. Money give it chavala, and that in the give it chava, say the conditional sewers, in the deak of Zurua, Chida, Tingins, you could make me but like Giva in Chava to Yoma de Yinaya, Korangi, Anni Kadire, or Chavadi give it chava in Bade Karsna, Tingins, you could but it, what I knew you gave a Tsejiba, Slava, Takosna, Tingins in the Anikan Kasna give it church in a shower, Tingins in the same Nibala, Sejibi, Tinne, or Tindibidua, and Logila, give it Gavaji. That in the Miguel at Sage to Navy Gavati, Latin, Duba Latini, Ruadang Ramsu, Lugi Tony Tini, Gangan Shidan, Simi Tony, Gangan Yiligo. Tapag is Simi Gubadra living to, and is Sim the Sejiba lived there de Sejiba Dilla, and is Sim the Givy Miguel a Kazuba to Jurum within a Anipe Gasna, ah, Kadirata, Manazo Masunatin, Kadir Tindigita, Tuzu Kandiji, called Sim Miba Tevas and Lamsang. Luna Sim Gitin, she do jump with Deval Gananji, Gawaji or Lugi, Nebasel, Dinni, Gawatan, Simgi Nebasel, Gavi, Simj, Ranshingi, Pesh, Dugu Yonegi, O Tindeji Girwa, O Tiyon Machumadi, and Lu Latimi Neba, the Simil Timi Neba, the same Matuanza, Tindeji Gonis Lego. That teacher, that Lu Shindu Jawatan, Sim Shindu Jawa, Sedi. Thing is in Pagas <laughs> Simne Guba the Limni Tarun by Mutun Gum 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 Nidin Namshina Tin Simdi Ani Kasna Mikbala Pen Neba Tebu Tobin Dutin Sim Ani Mikbala Chita de Dudu Kudrua. That tea gelatini Ani Sim Gitini Timbitini Lundi Lula should be to witni Ludi and give it a chitter to the good ruas. That tila tini ani kasna a lugin atini kudum room in yabatidan. Sim Gitini, I'll give all good in ruin Yabanidi, and the Rangis to Kevadi, what a dig motor to Sunichi would do since that Lu Xinjan than Sim Xinjan said the Chile de Carsena, Lugin Ning and Lendon, Sim Ging and the Passevach, the Chilegi, Chile or Takuran, what in digi, what did he give up Nebu Changes, what in digi that did do so. So now the next reading down the next line. Physical and mental dysfunctions are the unfitness of your body and mind for being employed to cultivate virtue at will. Their remedies, physical and mental pliancy, entail great serviceability in terms of applying your body and mind to wholesome actions, for you are free of physical dysfunctions of both the body and the mind. So here, this is really getting at the basic essence, the basic entity 
or identity of these physical of, of physical and mental pliancy. So this is they, their basic uh, identity is have is this uh, factor or quality which is what um, removes or uh, dispel. So I'm not saying that word here, but they're, so they're what clears away or, or, or removes this physical and mental dysfunction. And so that's that's what this appliance is, is. That's its basic essence. And here, this, uh, again, the dysfunction is what makes it so that we have obstacles. It produces obstacles to being able to uh, perform virtuous activity, to do virtue. So even though, We've by the ninth stage of this uh, of the nine stages, even though one's already eliminated completely the physical, sorry, the uh, lath lethargy and excitement, those have been removed from that from that ninth stage. Uh, at the same time, the, there's still these um, you know faults that are you know some faults dependent on the on the body, some faults dependent on the mind that can arise, which is sort of it's there. For, for instance, what makes it so that when you go to meditate, so you would put, you know, you put your mind on the object of meditation and fo by focusing on it, it does engage in this, you know, spontaneous concentration at that ninth stage, but there's still maybe some lack of deep joy. So that lack of deep joy in, in doing a meditation or engaging in virtue is caused by these mental and physical dysfunctions. And that's what gets cleared away by the pliancy. So, um, and so when we're talking about virtue here, really, the concentration itself is the virtue we're referring to. This concentration, um, we, we also have this term again that comes up of, um, I believe it was not it's not equanimity the one that we were using uh it was um equipoise yeah i believe it was equipoise equilibrium there we go okay i found it equilibrium so um this is a, like a technical term so equilibrium or concentration itself is the virtue so again going to meditate and we have this kind of single pointed uh concentration you put your mind on the object as long as you want but we you know, if if, you, if there's a, an absence, if this deep joy, this great joy doesn't arise, that's because of the dysfunction. So, so again, this um, ability to remain completely stably on the object and to be able to put your body and mind uh, into service however you would like, uh, right? Applying your body and mind to wholesome actions, being able, oh, here we go, being able to cultivate virtue at will, these, you know, these kinds of things. So, so, so there's different ways of saying the same thing that you're able to, you know, engage uh, in, in virtue as much as you'd like, however you'd like, and be able to basically control your body and mind. And that's uh, what happens. That's what this physical mental pliancy does. That's their function. That's right. That Anne 
ตาสุสุยกิวิชลกุดรุงอดันสิมกิวิชลกุดรุงอาสลาร่วาตาคันเดสกุดรุงอาสิกิตาเนกับกิเฉเลดิคันเดจิลสกันลิกวาสนะเ
as the single point of concentration. Uh, there's sometimes still the ability, there's the potential of sort of feeling drowsy. I'm sorry, that's probably not the right term here, drowsy, but um, feeling like um, um, just just kind of un, 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 uh, engaged or something like that. Uh, so that's this uh, negativity that comes from the dysfunction. And then, so then there's eventually when you are continuing to meditate after the, you've attained the ninth stage, then there's eventually this feeling in the body, a physical feeling that feels like you could fly into the sky, it feels like you could, you know, just sort of lift up or fly into the sky. And then you have that sense, that felt sense in your, in your experience. That's this kind of sensation of lightness, this sensation of lightness. That's the body having this serviceability, this capacity to act, to act at one's will. Then the mind uh, also, you know, there can be times when, uh, I mean, even at, at the stage of having a single pointed concentration, but the mind still has some difficulty really enduring, um, you know, like overcoming the, those negativities and finding joy and overcoming the afflictions. So not being able to sort of en endure that uh, for, for too long. And then, you know, you again, you lack that kind of uh, joy in overcoming affliction. So when, when you finally keep meditating and then you have this inner experience, this experiential sense, experience sensation of having like your mind, the meditating mind and the object being meditated on have become mixed together. They've, they've become fused. Then that's the sign that you have this plot, the serviceability of your mind. So the bodies, the experience that you have in, in the body when you have this uh, physical uh, serviceability is an experience of lightness, like you could fly. And then the mind's uh, experience is, or sorry, when you have the sign of having this mental serviceability is that there's an experience of having the mind be merging and fusing with the object being meditated upon. So uh, these are when you know now you have this capacity, you have this pliancy, you have this capacity to pacify the faults and, and these different remaining problems that are sort of obstructing your meditation. What <laughs> Numonpoala Ani Donatashin Nico Gomjaudi, Lugitoni Medeva Levechik, Simbitoni Medeva Levechikungori, 
那绿新疆的新新疆那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那个那
when you want to know, okay, when have I actually achieved this serenity? When is when is the you know full serenity there? Then that's what you look at is these experiences in the body and mind of the body first having this light experience, this experience of great lightness, as if you could just go into the sky, rise into the sky. And then for the mind, you have this inner experience and the sense of, first of all, there's two factors that your mind and the object of, observe, of meditation have merged. And the other is this sort of just like completely, you know, without really your, in, you know, without um, having any really control over it, your mind just naturally has this great joy in engaging in virtue and this great joy arises um, in the mind. And so that's, those are the signs that you've achieved the physical and mental pliancies and then also the physical and mental serviceability. Mm-hmm. Da what Tindy In short, due to the unserviceability of the body, okay, read that one. When pliancy is achieved, this tendency stops and your body and mind becomes very easy to employ. 
such complete physical and mental serviceability arises to a slight degree from the time that you start to cultivate con concentration. This gradually increases until it finally turns into pliancy and one point in meditative serenity. At first, this is difficult to recognize due to its subtlety, but later on, it becomes easy to recognize. Asanga Srivaka's Srivaka level states, at the very beginning, when you begin the correct training, the occurrence of mental and physical pliancy and mental and physical serviceability is subtle and difficult to discern. And as that one-pointed mind and mental and physical pliancy increase in the manner of a chain reaction, they lead to a one-pointed mind and mental and physical pliancy that are obvious and easy to discern. This is now discussing the stages of the generation of physical and mental pliancy or the process of its generation, such that pointing out that it's not something that simply just arises suddenly or, or immediately uh, in, in one's practice. So it starts off at the beginning of one's meditation practice of generating of practicing shamatha. Once you begin this uh, meditation, even from the first stage, then it's there, but in a very subtle form, it's very subtle and it's very intermittent or very just comes in short bursts, short spurts of, um, of pliancy. Then uh, as you continue to increase your practice and in increase your time practicing and practice for a longer period of time, and that continues, then it starts to the physical and mental pliancy and the bliss that arises from independence upon physical and mental pliancy uh, is, is generated in full. And the uh, phrase here, as it says, it's subtle and difficult to discern. And at the, at the you know point of um, the kind of complete attainment of serenity, it says it is uh, easy to recognize. So the point here being that it's easy to recognize is again, you have these inner experiences like this feeling of su such great lightness in your body uh, and this joy in your mind. Um, so you kind of have this understanding, oh, now this is, this is the pliancy that's arisen in me. You would you know, have that understanding that's that because you have these strong experiences. So it's, it's, easy to, un it's easy to discern, to recognize because it's so, such a, powerful experience, uh, you, know, you know clearly in your mind, okay, I have this, you know, this, this is the pliancy that's occurring. You, you have that thought or understanding. So at the beginning, it's difficult to uh, recognize. And that's because, again, it's not very strong. It's, it's just weaker, it's more subtle. And um, as you, you know, again, you, when you get that kind of great, uh, joyfulness, what was the word just used above? Um, cheerfulness is how right? this, uh, when you have that cheerfulness in, in the meditation and eliminating the faults and afflictions, you have that, you know, that experience, that's, that's the completed, the uh, fully realized, uh, fact, the fully realized pliancy at that stage. So when you're starting off from the first stages, uh, the first mental state up to the ninth stage, then you are, you know, there is pliancy present, but it's not this complete, um, fully realized pliancy. So the, the fully realized pliancy, when we say, you know, being able to recognize, to get a, you know, we're talking about getting a um, sort of being introduced to this pliancy, then the pliancy that we're referring to is this completed and the fully realized pliancy. So, well, do you that you order a new salis, tea, tumble, corner, young tabby, joala, zombie chairs, sim shin to jambatan, lu shin to jambatan, sim down, lu less room, a chuani, chava de, tabba kawa inus, share downs, tea sim sechi by needam, sim down. Uh 
Ani pe tamur tamur de dat din urmă, zuba de, da, tinan la desun de joa, zumbi cele, Xinjiang da, Liu Xinjiang sim tava tinde, tava tava gava tinde, tava gava sa tăi ne schimbă tuzi tu, tundur tuzi tuzi tinde lebege, de cap un gol va, da, de, tine gând tine, tine a jebe 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 jebe, a a ceru ceru ceru, ani Liu Xin du jama da sim Xin du jama tuzi de ba. Da, dar nu tuzi, 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 da, 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 ceru, 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 tuzi, rând, 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 gom, jab, 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 da, nam si na, o da, din ce gata, a ne pe na, ce, a lui si nu jama, da, sim si nu jama, se gata, ne ca, ne pe gata, tuzi, de, ngar ghe, din ma ghe, din ghe, din ghe, gom, 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 o de mașină, de pe la pezi, ar pe la aranzo, pe la ce, mi-a dorit o zi, cu l-am să-mi tot pisea, mă rog, cu ce, 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 da, de gom, 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 de Tisa de dat, dar ne-a gândit că nu sunt vorsi, nu? Semne cu vii ca doar lui Sim Xinjiang, ai o sână, ies. Ina ea, lui Sim Xinjiang, eu sunt zoba de eu mare. Dar lui Sim Xinjiang, eu sunt zoba de ne, a ne și ne șaure. Să odă tine, să înzăm de odi. Ia mă, ia vă ce e de. Ar ne, din ce murere eu a de ce, a ne ce zi a duc, să ne ia, a ne ne va eu sunt zoba de, a ne și ne, să ne gătine, tine să gătine, și ne gătine, mică de. Și ne te bolă lebe, unde o dată timp de ce gata, n-am văzut și acolo are ies, o dată timp de ce gata, eu condus sunt atavară, antila de ne, ne s-a nemat, pe casă eu și eu sunt, o dată de, ne cerem ce tu sunt, dar cum e și unul tu sunt, dar așa asa. So, Gunla again read, we'll read again this quote from Asanga. So Asanga Shravaka level states, at the very beginning when you begin the correct training, The occurrence of mental and physical pliancy and mental and physical serviceability is subtle and difficult to discern. And as that one point in mind and mental and physical pliancy increase in the manner of a chain reaction, they lead to a one point in mind and mental and physical pliancy that are obvious and easy to discern. This is explaining or giving the source again for the previous uh, section or few sentences, the source of the Srifaka levels. And so, once again, reviewing what it is talking about is this process of starting meditation and at the beginning of practicing meditation, then, as it says here, this pliancy and serviceability are subtle and difficult to discern. Again, difficult to discern is because they're very, you know, just they come in very brief, brief bursts. They come uh, in a subtle form and very briefly only. So one's practice grows more and more, um, you know, as it, as it grows more and more and develops more and more, your practice gets stronger and the time you spend grows longer and longer. Then the, you know, this very subtle form of pliancy that was at the, there at the beginning is going to increase. So, uh, so even at the beginning, while you weren't really able to recognize, were not really able to identify that the pliancy is there, it's still there. We would, uh, so we're saying that, that Sankhaba is saying, and this text is saying, it is still there at the beginning. And um, so we can, we can talk, so it's still there, it's just very subtle, and then it grows stronger. So this is something we can understand from just using the example of a flower. A flower is something that starts off very, very, very subtle and hard to see, hard to hard to identify, and and then finally it fully blossoms, and then 
it's easy to see the flowers. So really we say we can say that the flower is starting to grow at the time that the seed is planted. So you plant the seed and from that time, a flower is already beginning to grow, but you can't see it. It's not, um, you know, it's too subtle. So then finally, uh, you know, it grows, it just starts, you know, there's a little bud and then you still can't really, you know, identify the flower in a little bud, but then finally it fully blossoms and it's very easy to identify. So this is like with our experience in meditation, as the experience uh, strength grows stronger and deeper, uh, even though we started right with the first stage of placing, inwardly placing the mind, uh, there's already some pliancy and some form there. And first through the ninth stages, your experience goes stronger and stronger. So if we ask, you know, is there, uh, just to make it clear, you, you know, if you have the, direct question, is there pliancy during the first through ninth stages of serenity? The answer is yes, there is pliancy. Then if you ask, but is it perfected pliancy? Is it the fully realized pliancy? I'm just using those two terms to, trans to render the same Tibetan soul. The perfected or fully realized pliancy, is that there? The answer is no, that is not there. Uh, so then uh, Tsongkhapa is, is describing this point using the source of the Srivaka levels. Oh, do you? That's the order. Sing you also to Oshin, Tabon Lavi, Xinjiang, the Gibi, not in this. Ding in the Gombala, Zubi, Kansati, Leba, Chipeba, Chipeba, Yum, Chiba, Gedes, Medivi, Chiba, and Mahinos. Tikemata or Tiki Nangwachi Legis 
The portent of the occurrence of easily discernible perfected pliancy is this. Persons who are striving to cultivate concentration experience a sense of heaviness and numbness of the brain, but it is not an unpleasant heaviness. As soon as this occurs, they are freed of the mental dysfunction that obstructs their delight in eliminating afflictions and mental pliancy, which is the remedy for this dysfunction arises for the first time. The Shravaka level states, the portent of the proximate occurrence of obvious, easily discernible one-pointedness of mind and mental and physical pliancy is a sensation of the brain becoming heavy. But this is not a harmful characteristic. As soon as this happens, you eliminate the mental dysfunction that belongs to the category of afflictions and that obstructs your delight in eliminating afflictions and the mental serviceability and mental pliancy, which are the remedy, remedy for this dysfunction arise. Okay, that's where, yeah, okay. So, so we have this single pointed concentration of placing the mind, being able to focus on the observed object and, um, <clears throat> and then medit and so placing the mind on the object and meditating and the process of doing this over and over over time then leads to the attainment of this serviceability this this capacity to operate to function as one wishes right to be able to utilize one's body mind as one wishes and so there's some kind of portent here. It says portent. You can say sign or, you know, the the uh, 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 alert, um, the, the sign. Anyway, the something that's alerting you to the you know coming arising of the physical and mental pliancy, the the perfected or the completely realized, the fully realized physical and mental pliancy. And what is that sign or portent? It is this. Um, kind of feeling uh, an experience of the brain being heavy. So your actual brain has a heavy sensation uh, with, you know, the person who's meditating, you feel this feeling. And it's sort of like if you take, if you, you're, it's very cold, if you're very cold, and then you take a hot, you know, make your hand hot somehow, or some, you know, if you have a very warm hand and then place it on your very cold body. And there's sort of a, a unique feeling there, an unusual feeling that comes from that. And it's similar, I suppose. Uh, Okay, 
So he's saying like you take a hot your hand if your hand is hot and you put it on top of your head, then it then there's uh, an unusual feeling or unique feeling there. So it's a feeling that's like that that we're talking that's being talked about. So this portent, this this sort of warning sign, I guess that's a word we can use, the warning sign that this is coming is like, it's, it's you know, the, the feeling that we're talking about, like your hand being put on your head, it's sort of like when you know we know that the sun is going to come up because right before it comes up, you just start to see some sun rays poking out, you know, in the distance, some some you know a, a tiny bit of light starting to come. So that's that's a similar you know way of being important to uh, alert us to the coming of this of the sun rising. Like, likewise, this feeling in your head or brain is important to the arising of the physical pliancy. Okay, so those the examples uh, got clear after I asked again. So then uh, the order here again is talking about uh, the physical pliancy here is coming before the mental pliancy, right? So physical pliancy arises first. And the, you know, again, the, the feeling that we're talking about here is something that is a, it's said as a, to be a heaviness, but not an unpleasant uh, sensation at all. So it's you know right, just as it says, it's, this is not an unpleasant heaviness. It's instead something that uh, yeah, it just says it's not. He just says it's not unpleasant, and uh, it is. Uh, for this again kind of resistance or the I, I keep I realize the word that they're saying keep in the text that keeps saying resistance is this sort of dislike or unpleasantness I see, I see now um so it's this kind of but that makes sense to say resistance the this resistance to eliminating afflictions is abandoned and you're able to now um engage in this once you have you know this sensation and the pliancy rising then you have instead just delight and this joy in abandoning the afflictions and so there's no more resistance That's That Ani 
Oh, Tini Nebapon la Migawa Chegi Tini, ah Tinde Vita, ah Karita, Lu Lesu Mirua, Sejava, Lu Lesu Mirua Sing, or that Lu Lesu Mirua Sheg Nibu, Lu Shitu Java, said the other lady that the Jela is. Sim Shinjang Jela, Nigga to Ata, Neba to call Junior Dua. Lu Shinjan Tobala, Neba to Sim Shinjang to Jova Hasna, Lu Shinjan Tobala, Sim Gum Java in Niba Tun, or Sim Gum Java in Niba Tun, Dundi. And it's simply Shombar Lundi and Dinibel Niba Tumacho. Lundi Lula Chabito get in it, Ludi at any Casna, Ota, Casin Nevata, Chitam Dudu, the Petur Mukazuba to Nene, Ne to get in the young with Nabatini, Missing Jang City. What a tea, Neba to Rangi do, and the Lunga Temba, Lundi, Tinny, Cola Tinging is Sim de la Temu, Sim de Rangi Miba Gomja or Turk, that to the Jujitu, Simali to a Simibala neg, gum jab 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 Lung les sur moi deux gouvernes, lung les sur moi deux balas, sem les sur moi deux gouvernes, sem les sur moi deux balas, sem mi balatini, comme j'ai eu une voix tombale deux gouvernes. Autre que le problème du sendé ni songe, soit d'un petit tout. Autre que le problème Okay. Then, due to the power of the arising of the pliancy that makes your mind serviceable, an energy that is a cause for physical pliancy courses through your body. Once this energy has pervasively coursed throughout the parts of your body, you are freed of physical dysfunction. And physical pliancy, which is the remedy for physical dysfunction, arises. Once this saturates the entire body, there is an experience of being as if filled with the power of this serviceable energy. The Shravaka level states, due to its pliancy, due to pliancy's occurrence, energy wind, included among the great elements, that is conducive to the arising of physical pliancy, courses through the body. When it flows, you are freed of the physical dysfunction that belongs to the category of afflictions and that obstructs your delight in eliminating afflictions. And the physical pliancy, the remedy for this affliction, saturates the entire body so that it seems as if, as if you are filled with this energy. Now, physical pliancy is a very pleasant sensation within the body, not a mental process. Uh, I don't think we got to that part yet. Okay, so, um, oh, maybe. Okay, as the master, I'll just read that one verse. As the master Stiramati states, citing Sutra, if a distinctive physical sensation is qualified by delight, recognize this to be physical pliancy. If your mind is delighted, your body becomes pliant. So we're here in this uh, section with another verse from the Srivaka levels. And so Jiren Bache is explaining what the a verse means and then the, the verse itself. And so there's this, um, what was just described is the signs, the portent, the, portent, uh, the, the sign that alerts you to the, the oncoming arising of physical pliancy. And then you have the mental pliancy that comes after that. So after you have the mental uh, pliancy, after you've attained the mental pliancy, then the um, kind of the, the energies that makes the mind, um, how do you say, um, sort of on, uh, uh, that, that kind of can, you know, like bring the energy of your mind down is, uh, eliminated and you have instead the the wind so the energy or wind we can say either way here it just uh, has kind of them hyphenated energy wind so that's fine I'll just say energy so the energy uh, that we're talking about here is actually the mind is something that the mind depends upon right so the mind depends upon this this energy in general so you know, you have this energy that courses through the body and then it allows your body and mind to sort of, to become relaxed. The energy allows the mind uh, and body to become relaxed. 
So the, there's this process of once physical or at the time of physical pliancy being attained that every part of your body is completely pervaded, is completely filled with this energy. And then the body becomes serviceable, becomes util, able to be utilized. Uh, like it said, to be able to be, to engage in virtue, to use your body in the service of virtue for as long as you wish, however you wish. So you're able to enjoy, take great joy in abandoning faults, abandoning afflictions. So then, um, so then the, after the physical pliancy is attained, the mental pliancy is what comes next. So there is a definitive order here, a definite order. And so we uh, I can kind of look at this and see how, why it is that this order happens the way it does. So you have this experience of being filled with energy and pervading every part of your body. And so if you think about how the mind, when you're meditating, is, you know, the, the mind is meditating and there's sort of this, um, you know, there could be, again, these still obstacles remaining, the, the dysfunctions, the, the capacity of the mind to do as it wishes and remain on, in virtue as it wishes is not yet attained. So then the body has this experience of being pervaded with energy. And so now at this point, you can remain staying in meditation physically as long as you wish, however you wish. So then your body is able to stay in meditation. And so because, again, the mind depends upon the body and so on the independence upon now having this sort of full um you know serviceable body then your, your mind and body both are able to attain this uh, kind of serviceability because the mind now generates the capacity to also um you know overcome these um you know to take joy in overcoming the faults so it's this section here is sort of is indicating how each uh, these state uh, how there are stages in the arising of physical pliancy, mental pliancy, and then um, the to the physical and mental bliss as well. So so that's sort of the the main point of this section here that there is a definitive order to the arising of these. Yes. Oh,他丢了绿心都讲话呢，绿给啷个说一下？切一顿话是应该是，心中的明的是，路边路边的绿给说一句，切把我嗯，搞别死呢，绿心都讲话就把切的是，一个呢，嗯，绿心都嗯
Lung di lesu rumah cahin tu lung cap sakit dua dia lesu rumah insan ke dua la tempat kerja cebu anjir eh sebenarnya, pada di segala tuan guru agus nak kaji ke dua sinjang dia cebu sem kita ni sem kau insan dua sin tu dua dalam dua sinjang di luar sana dua sin tu jangan asli cebu yang macam ni dah jadi luar jangan yang gua luar dah ti ti tu dah di segala tuan guru tu jadi dua sin tu jangan asli rezeki dah ni ramai tu sebab dah ni mari so dah di segala tuan guru tu Okay, so now stare at my okay, yeah. Now physical, okay, so I'll repeat that. This is yeah, this was the last part I read before. Now physical pliancy is a very pleasant sensation within the body, not a mental process, as the master Staramati states, citing sutra. If a distinctive physical sensation is qualified by delight, recognize this to be physical pliancy. If your mind is delighted, your body becomes pliant. Thus, when physical pliancy initially occurs, due to the power of energy, there arises a great sense of well-being in your body. And on this basis, there also arises an, in your mind a most exceptional experience of that pleasure. Okay, no, he, yeah, so again, I didn't go into that part yet. So this is really talking now about for physical pliancy as well as mental pliancy. What are their, again, their, their sort of, um, um, you know, uh, how do we situate them sort of ontologically? How do, we, how do we identify them as sort of, what kinds of objects are they? Let's put it that way. So if we ask what kinds of objects are they, then the uh, physical pliancy, Sorry, the first, the mental pliancy has the nature of consciousness. Mental pliancy is a kind of consciousness. Physical pliancy has the nature of being physical sensation, which um, just, again, just, we have to kind of go into a terminology, <laughs> not to go into a long discussion, but here, sensation doesn't refer to, like, physical and sensation, and, you know, generally, we, it's not clear whether we're talking about consciousness or not, but here it's specifically definitely not consciousness. So we're not talking about the sensation as though it's a feeling, but the actual, um, just like, you know, the external object of, of I should say, the, the object of your physical consciousness, not the physical consciousness, okay, not the body consciousness. So it's the objects of the body consciousness that we're talking about here. So why again? Well, because it's this uh, experience, this, uh, this uh, experience of great lightness, right? So it's uh, Stiramati here, again, given as the source for saying that this is uh, not a mental process. Or, well, actually, yeah, that's just the Tsongkhapa saying that. So Tsongkhapa is saying this is not a mental process, meaning it's not consciousness. So that's another way of saying that is it's not mind, it's not mental factor, a mental factor. Um, then uh, we have, again, the body being pervaded, uh, every part of the body is pervaded by this energy. Now here, maybe energy isn't the right word to use, actually, because this is the point being made, is that it actually is like wind or air, right? So wind or air as in terms of being physical objects, this is now making the point that that's exactly the same thing we're talking about. This is a physical object that's pervading your body here. And so thus the pliancy itself is also a physical object. Uh, you know, so we talk about lightness, heaviness, all these things are physical. Um, you know, I like to, maybe we can just use the phrase instead of sensation, because um, that can be confusing, is that these are uh, tactile objects. That's sort of another, another common translation. So we'll just use that for the sake of clarity, because it's the main point of this very section. So these tactile objects uh, of lightness and heaviness are included within the, um, you know, the, the tactile objects which arise from the element. So there's a division uh, into of the tactile objects of those which are elements on the one hand, and then the second section, the section second category are tactile objects which arise from the elements. So um, then. That's uh, so lightness and heaviness are included in those that category tactile objects which arise from the elements. <clears throat> so then we have 
the the air or wind itself so i'm not saying energy anymore but the air i should just say the air itself is defined as that which is light and moving light and and having and, and motion and motion yeah moving light and moving so so that's again um you know the point being that this very um nature of this air which I called energy before, this is something which is light and moving. It is a physical object, it's kind of tactile object. And so the actual serviceability coming from it is also a tactile object. So that's the point being made here, which is important because uh, there are other scholars or texts which explain this differently. So then Tsongkhapa is, is making the point uh, here to, to explain it. Um, so that it clears away that kind of it, so that it counteracts the, having the wrong conception about it. Yes. Oh yeah, that that in the digon that in the that in my third look into the some dish again seen and that in the day to share and judge you have us now. That same Xinjiang the living do same vision, but you loom the any Shindu Jama Chagi the stage or that same down loom the down as a shuman to share down and do. ตากสนุลุงซึ่งจุบัจจิบาสตังกากิกับซุยนะเปตารุลุงดาเซมกิโกดิเจชิเปชุกชิมบุสจาชิมุทุงโกอรวาตาดีลุงดีลามาเดบ
Ah, lunghi, tabbi, lunghi, la temi, semi, candeggi, degno, semi, deva, lunghi, 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 Shumba, Shumba. Shumba, what did it? So I was hearing, mishearing a word which I earlier again also used and I mistranslated, so I apologize, but uh, hopefully I can clear it up now. So here, uh, so we'll, we'll stop going through the text at this point, but uh, again, let's wanting to clarify or go over one point a little bit more. So here there's this, you know, uh, the, you know, I'm going to just keep saying air, although now, you know, energy, if you want to think in your mind, energy, maybe that would make more sense, but I'll just keep saying air. Why not? So here air uh, is, is there's air, which is the mount for the mind. So it's the mount in the sense of the mind uh, riding on it, right? The, the mount of the mind and so <clears throat> there's uh there's no way in which you can move your body without depending on this air so if you want to raise your hand raise your, lift up your leg all these actions depend upon this wind uh that's why uh, even if you kind of have an urge to scratch you feel a sensation and you have an urge to scratch and go to scratch sort of in uh you know um so it um you know, you just go unconsciously or, or in, instinctually, you just go to scratch as a reaction, then that's also dependent on air, on the air. Now, the air we're talking about, it's not external air, like the air blowing around, the wind blowing around outside. This is internal air. Why I'm saying it might make sense to think of it as energy. But anyway, um, so this is an internal air. And it's responsible for all the uh actions of your body and also your mind even so it's you know your mind and the air sort of move together in one um in one interaction uh so when your mind is going to uh you know observe out to observe an object or to out, out to look towards an object then you know it's making distinctions there's this and that object or you know it's trying to think about different things or look at look at different things uh, that's all coming together with the wind that's sort of um, just the mount the mind is riding on that wind that's an explanation that's given so uh, so the example an example is sort of like if you just had wind without mind sorry air without mind then that's sort of like a person who has no eyes but has legs can move but can't see where they're going if you have a mind without the air that would be like a person who has eyes but no legs so they can see but they can't move so these two um go together in one interaction that's how, um the phrasing gun was using they they um it, they they move together in one maybe we can just say they move together in one action so that's what allows a person to move when they have both eyes and legs. Um, so the, the can do it. so then that's that's now related to this discussion about the different kinds of pliancy and serviceability. Why? Because again, you have the um, physical pliancy that arises, and so naturally that leads to the mental pliancy because the mind is always always dependent upon this with this air. So the air um, becoming, you know, making the body serviceable. Now the mind naturally will gain pliancy and become serviceable as well. So, and so now if um, anyone has questions, we can have time for a question and answer. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Um, my question about the heaviness in the head does that occur at the um, crown chakra, at the crown of the head? And um, can you, I understand it's not an unpleasant feeling and I, I, I kind of 
I mean, like, I feel like there have been many times where that um, experience has happened. Um, so does that linger for an extended period of time? Um, or does that at some point um, slip away and then you just move into that utter uh, state of joy and there's actually no real physical sensation, not even the, the heaviness in the head? Uh, let me just ask you, um, when you said, can you specify just one or the other, I guess, that you want to ask, is it in the crown or do you want to ask, is it in the crown chakra? Um, whatever you think is the better. I mean, I, you know, I've experienced a lot of intense heat right at the crown chakra, but um, I mean, whatever is the actual experience that Geshe Nangawa is referring to. Um, because my experience I can't really rely on as being anything of value. Um, so I guess whichever well, one is the experience which is he referring to. And then at some point, does that just simply dissolve um, right. as you move into these higher states and these higher realms? So, okay, I'll just, I mean, maybe I can just clarify what the, just, you know, remembering what the text had said that we went through. It says specifically it's, in, it's a sensation of heaviness in the brain. It actually says oh. the brain. Okay. So you want me to say? No. The, then just if you could ask him if it at some point, and maybe you maybe it was not clarified in, in my understanding, does that dissolve completely at some point? Okay. Sure. Uh, again, uh, 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 the lebe chi chi wu nongwa di da da aja di gi da mo di kesu di song da da di zu kare so kare da ああ、これ。これ、ちょっとこれだけど。ちょっとこれ。ちょっとこれ。ちょっとこれ。ちょっとこれ。ちょっとこれ。ちょっとこれ。ちょっとこれ。ちょっとこれ。ちょっとこれ
So then again, so again, I really spent most of the answer on the first part of the question of, I'm sorry, on the second part of the question, right? So yeah, I did try to ask him about the chakra, but he didn't say specifically about that. But um, what he said was um, this feeling. So we have the experience that we're talking about is something which is again, important, which it means like, you know, an alert, right? You get like, an, you're alerted to something that's about to come or, um, yeah, so it's it's something that's warning you or alerting you to something on the way. And what is that? It's the arising of the pliancy, right? So then uh, when we're talking about this alert, it's something that's very brief. It's very short-lived. It's something that is just this experience that you, you have, the, uh, uh, you know, an, an appearance or this, this sense of, oh, there's, there's something, um, you know, like, the example given as if you were taking, you know, a very a warm hand, placing it on your head or on your cold head, then there's that kind of feeling or sensation felt in your body, in, in the brain, actually. So it's kind of felt in the brain. And it's sort of like, you know, you have this sense of, oh, there's this, you know, feeling happening in my brain <laughs> as you're meditating. But again, this is a case where you're meditating single pointedly on some object. So that's your mind is completely focused and extremely, you know, very, very deeply focused on the object. So it's not like you're going to sit there and think about different feelings and examining different sensations in your body. It's sort of just this kind of quick sensation that comes and that's alerting you to the oncoming arising of this pliancy where you now are knowing, okay, now the, uh, this kind of the, the capacity, the, the um, potency of this pliancy is about to arise. And so that's that's just what's happening. It's a very brief, short-lived experience. And again, it's telling you what it's telling you is okay. Now this is um, uh, you know now this is this pliancy is on the way, and it's like a, this this sensation of warmth, this feeling of warmth, and uh, right. And so it's it's something that wouldn't remain very long. Yeah, that's the answer. Okay, we have one question or two even written in the chat box. Let me just take a look. Oh, it's a lot. No, it's not. Let me see. Okay, from Richard, physical pliancy allows you to place your body in virtue. Likewise, for mental virtue with mind pliancy. Here, the pliancy is the basis of the path. Okay, what is basis defined as? Is it the prerequisite or is it something else? Which Tibetan word are you using for pliancy? Is it le surungwa, action to prepared? Or is it shintu jangpa, very purified? Or is it some other word? Uh, yes, so I, I will just answer the one about the, the translation, I guess. Uh, so it is shintu jangpa, right, or shinjang. Usually, um, you know, shintu jangpa is sometimes a, a few times in this section um, spelled out with the particles too, but usually it's just combined into a, what's called a dutik, right? It's just, you take two words or kind of, yeah, two words and take out the particles and just combine them. So it's just Xinjiang. Um, and, you know, that's one of, anyway, yeah. So the word is Xinjiang. So that answers that. Uh, Le Surungwa is the one that uh, is translated here as serviceability, right? Okay, that answered the question about the again like that. Do you think the 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 tiny the inji tiny the but but you can okay. Then you do you think that the uh kerangi the dish some some the apply uh 
da lugi shinjang dong sengi shinjang ni ani da gewe chue la da jita ko du rung wei chi le chen yu ri es ani shinjang di lam gi shima ri es chi sung song ha lam gi lam gi shima yin bi tsu ka ri es shima shima jo shi kya tong lam gi shima lam gi shima sun lam gi shima sir shama song lam gi shi shi ah lam gi shi ale lam gi shima shima ha ボディ、ダシンジャンエナディ。ボディ、ダリシンジャンダンシンシンジャンディ。タ、ラムギタペのシマセジケジシエディカスナタン。アランズダラムツオディカスナンタ、ミドチョジョンバチンジロワ。タ
question, question, question. But there are still these faults dependent upon the body and the mind when you put the mind on the function of meditation and it does achieve the function of concentration, but there's still the lack of deep joy and this is what gets cleared away by the pliancy. What is the difference between deep joy and excitement? Hmm, that's a good question. Oh, get on the... Uh, guys, uh, that's Xinjiang, Semgi Xinjiang, the, and in Yomachogi, uh, Bongwala, guys, uh, Neba Bongwala, uh, guys, uh, Migawa, Neba Bongwala, Migawa, the Sogiri, Bongi, the Esra, and the, uh, then the Jesuit, Xinjiang, Semgi Xinjiang, Yudu, the, uh みちんしょしえらにしわらつんびかんなのじりぎれせじょわてたんくばにくばせでかすなせんなみんぎわんけたちろらたねすらちろろどろどじゃぎゆらどろどじゃぎゆらてねばちょいさんばじらくばらほろ
Raksha is Serba, the Raksha Yena, then the Xinjiang the Rick Shenda Chi, Jury Bisperna, uh, that is a great that Tra Yenja don't show a Xinjiang don't she Nishagi, young Jaggy, Xinjiang, then they young Yuribis. Alle to a child, the Lu Yangwa, Sage Roti, Lu Yangwati, Kwa Lesurwati So there are not other types of pliancy associated with each of the uh, four other physical senses. And this is, again, just to contextualize it, what uh, this is in terms of meditation, uh, what's required to overcome, we have to overcome the faults of the mind as well as the faults of the body. We have to be able to stop them or cut those off. And so this is the main thing that stops the faults of the body, this physical pliancy. So the physical pliancy um, that we're talking about here, you know, uh, is simply referring to this, uh, you know, phenomenon, which stops the physical, the body's uh, faults, so the pro having problems with our body. And so, there's nothing like this uh, with regard to the eyes or the ears, for instance. And again, it's something which is, it's this nature of physical lightness. It is lightness. It's the lightness which we're talking about is the physical pliancy. So it's um, something that's a physical, a physical, I'm saying sensation again, but you know, that is the text uses that term too, but it's this physical tactile object, right? Um, because it's something that the body experiences directly. And so um, why is there no, nothing, no need for, or no, you know, situation where there's a pliancy for the other senses? Well, uh, the, once the body becomes pliant and serviceable, so all the sense, all the other senses become serviceable as well because they all are dependent upon the body. The eye, the ear, the nose, and the tongue are also parts of the body, actually, right? <laughs> These are all parts of the body. So they all are dependent on the body. And so when we say the body becomes serviceable, then the whole body becomes serviceable. So all the parts of it, including your uh, five, your four other physical senses there. And so, um, so since they depend on the body, there's no special you know, eye pliancy or ear pliancy. Thank you very much. Um, I have a quick question. Uh, can physical or mental pliancy occur separately and burst throughout uh, different sessions before full pliancy and not like the typical order? Can you have mental pliancy before physical pliancy if it's not full pliancy? 
that makes any sense. <laughs> Again, I don't know. Xinjiang, Yongzhu, Zhongguo, the Matomun, na, any, chi, that, Lugi, chi, dong, Lugi, Xinjiang, na, to, semi, Xinjiang, Jesu, tops, and a young, the, uh, chi, Yongzhu, Yongzhu, Zhongguo, my inbe, my ink, and she, Xinjiang, the, chi, uh, the, and the semi, Xinjiang, young, gula, get to, get to get a bit, get see, but a bit. Yonzo，嘛，做呗，读读读个的。啊，那嘞，我们到底读书，读读读读，谁教的？对了，你也没嘞，可是呢，读历史书啊，当然，什么历史书？当然，用书做吧，对个，可是呢，什么历史书啊
Lose Thank you. Thank you.